The purpose of this video is to develop basic boundary conditions by solving a very simple problem. So let us recall that the differential equation or the deflection line V of X is a second order differential equation where the right hand side is the bending moment. To motivate our development, let me consider a cantilever beam of length L subjected to a point force at the tip. To formulate the boundary conditions, I will observe that on the left hand side we have a wall or a fixed support. The wall completely constrains the vertical displacement or the deflection and also it fully constrains the rotation or the angle. Therefore, we state that at x equal to zero, v is equal to zero and theta equal to zero. I refer to these boundary conditions as physical. I would like to rewrite them in a different form, which replaces the second boundary condition with the derivative of B. Namely, I can now state that at X equal to zero, V equal to zero, and V prime equal to zero. So now my boundary conditions are expressed in terms of the function V and its first derivative. And I will refer to this boundary condition says mathematical. They're completely equivalent. We use the physical one when we look at the problem. Once we formulated the mathematical, we can proceed with solving the differential equation. Now let us derive the right hand side for the differential equation. To this end, I will make a cut at the generic distance x and consider the beam segment to the right of the cut. Here are the internal forces. And uh, I'm only interested in M. Therefore, I will write down some of the moments about C, which allows me to calculate M of X. Now I can combine the generic equation for the deflection with the specific equation for the bending moment and I end up with the differential equation for V and I can supplement it with two boundary conditions. And now we see that there is light at the end of the tunnel because I will have two integrations. This will result in two integration constants and I have two conditions, exactly two conditions to determine those two constants. So having this balance is of course critical. Now let's see how it works. So first I will rewrite V double prime as this function. So all I did is I expanded the right hand side and now all I have to do is to integrate uh, polynomial functions, right? So V prime, and here comes the first constant, right? Now I take this expression and I integrate it once again. Please check how things work, right? Term by term. Of course, now I have C1x plus C2, the other constant. Now I have 
the expressions for v and v prime, and I can simply impose boundary conditions where I will claim that at x equal to zero, v must be equal to zero. So I substitute x into this expression. I'm only left with c2. So it tells me that c2 is equal to zero. Now I do exactly the same for v prime, plug in x equal to zero, I end up with c1. And so it happens that in this problem, both integration constants are equal to zero. And as a result, I can calculate what is v. So I substitute c1 and c2 equal to zero into this expression. And that's the answer that I get. Of course, an interesting particular case is to calculate what is the displacement of the tip. In order to do that, I will substitute x equal to L into this expression, and I obtain this answer. Of course, my displacement is positive because the force is downward and so is the displacement.